everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be sharing some productivity advice for PhD students. One thing that I'm going to be talking about is a paper on productivity that I read recently by a PhD student called I'll Finish It This Week and Other Lies, which was sent to me by my supervisor. So shout out to Barry for sending that to me. Thank you. Before we get into that, I suppose we have a few things. I'm currently working on some Notion templates for PhD students, productivity type templates, and you will be finding out about that through my mailing list. So if you haven't signed up yet, it's at www.phdandproductivity.com. I'll have that link down below. And I'll also be doing a really little brief update of how the templates are looking at the end of this video. So do make sure you stay tuned if you want to check out how that's going. This week's comment shout out is from Thais Souza, who says, investing in an ergonomic chair is such a good idea if you're working from home. They are a little costly, but so worth it. And I wholeheartedly agree, especially the chair I had before I bought this one recently really wasn't that bad. But like once I sat into this, I was like, whoa, this makes such a big difference. I am going to be doing an updated sort of work from home essentials video soon because I've bought some new things recently and even things that I didn't think were gonna be a big thing have been life changing. If you want to be considered for the comment shout out for my next video, be sure that you have commented down below on this video. Now let's get into the main part of this video. So first thing we're gonna be doing is looking at this paper that my supervisor sent me by Kaylee Brower an astrophysics PhD student at MIT. Do definitely check out Kaylee's Twitter. The handle is at Kaylee Brower. That's K-A-L-E-Y-B-R-A-U-E-R. So do make sure you follow her because it's always good to support other PhD students in whatever their endeavors are. And also check out this paper because it's pretty short and it's a really interesting read. So I'll have that paper linked down below. This paper is all about how our expected finish times for things don't always match up to our actual finish times, particularly in sort of research and the different tasks we'll have as researchers. Kaylee and a couple of other students, so she had two postdocs, four graduate students and two undergraduate students. They were part of this weekly goal group, essentially a goal setting group that tracked their tasks, what they were planning on getting done for the week and then what they actually got done over a nine month period. And they were tracking obviously the expected and actual completion times. This is the sort of research that's come from this, I think in a way that they, they hadn't intended this to come about, but it's I think it's ended up being a really interesting thing. I would love to see if they ever did a bigger cohort study with larger numbers of PhD students or um, higher level researchers as well, like professors, because I feel like it'd be really interesting to see the progression. So they looked at a variety of tasks. They organized them into different categories, coding, writing, reading, administrative, talk prep. So if you have any kind of conference presentation coming up, service or volunteer work, and then problem set, which is basically like homework that isn't sort of coding or reading based. So like other types of homework assignments. Collectively, these students in the nine months tracked 559 tasks. 17% of them by the end of the nine months weren't complete. They found that on average, they completed 53% of their weekly assigned tasks, but tasks on average take 1.7 times longer than anticipated. They found in particular that coding and writing tasks took the longest times out of the others, which I think makes sense because I think with something like reading a paper or sending emails and, you know, administrative things, meetings, anything like that, it is somewhat defined already. If you're looking at reading a 10 page paper, you sort of have a sense of how long that's going to take based on experience. Whereas if you're looking to write a 10 page paper, that can be a very different thing. And the same way when you're coding, you don't always know what types of problems you're gonna face in your programming. Something that seems really easy can end up taking weeks and something that you think is gonna take a long time can end up being really fast. And it really just depends. It's something that I'm trying to get across to students as much as possible now because I'm working on a class with my supervisor where we're working with data science students. And that's something I'm trying to stress that it really just, like you need to see how you go because there will always be things in your projects that take so much longer than you thought and other things that you thought would take ages that don't take that much time. But I think it makes sense that coding and writing end up being 
the things that do take a good bit longer than expected. They also looked at whether there was a difference across the career levels. So obviously mentioning that they had two undergraduate, two postdocs and four graduates. So there wasn't a huge number of students, I think, to be able to make any clear differences here. So I would love to see if there was more in the future. I feel like that would be so interesting. They looked at that and they found that there wasn't a huge difference. I guess the idea was that they were wondering, do you get better at estimating the amount of time it takes to finish your tasks as you move up through the academic career ladder, essentially, or up through, I suppose, academic studies? And they did find that actually undergraduate students tend to get their tasks finished more on time than at the higher levels which in a way makes sense because a lot of your tasks when you're an undergraduate student are for classes, their assignments and things like that, that you have a deadline for. The teachers will generally assign you work that is supposed to take the amount of time that's given. Whereas when you're in graduate level, it's very different. It's a lot more open. There aren't necessarily things that you're doing that are, you know, having a deadline and going to take that amount of time and it really just depends and then they found that the postdocs were slightly better than the graduate students which might suggest that you do get a little bit better they also looked at whether they themselves got better over time so as they were going through this weekly goal setting process did they get any better and they find that the results were a bit up and down that they did get better and then eventually that started to go backwards a little bit they found that they were at least a little bit better able to determine or estimate the amount of time that the tasks would take which is good I'm glad to hear it that hopefully there is some light at the end of the tunnel with this that we will get better that's something I feel like I've gotten better at over time having a real sense of okay I need to do this and knowing around how long it's going to take I think I have gotten better at doing that in terms of the combination between the type of task and the level they found that the amount of problem set work like homework things tends to decrease as you go up higher through the through the levels which makes sense in undergraduate you have a lot of homework in graduates you might have a bit and then in postdoc I don't think you would be doing that many classes so you shouldn't have too much and then they found that writing and administrative work tends to increase as you go up through the levels so coding stays around the same which again makes sense because throughout undergraduate you're coding the whole time graduate you're coding the whole time postdoc you're coding the whole time but you'll be writing more and doing more sort of admin work at the higher levels, which makes some sense. A couple of the other key takeaways were that tasks with deadlines tend to be completed on time. This sort of makes sense. I feel like when you know something has to be done by a given time, you are more likely to be motivated to get it done. And they did find that it could be the possibility that time-based goals might work better than assigning yourselves tasks. One thing that was mentioned in this paper was the idea of constantly moving your to-do list over to the next week. You you have a, a set tasks that you want to get done that week and then you keep ending up pushing those forward, pushing those forward, pushing those forward. And that's something that I've recently learned to stop doing and to just not have that perpetual feeling of failure with your tasks occurring and that's what I will get into for the second part of this video. Overall really enjoyed that paper. I, I really hope that I know it's not really relevant to her research area but I do hope Kaylee will continue with this maybe as some sort of interest side project type situation because I really did enjoy it. If you like this kind of video where I go through some results from a productivity paper, I do have a few other papers in mind that I would love to sort of share with you and explain the results. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like this kind of video. That helps me know that this is good content for you or comment down below your opinion. I'm going to be doing a part two to this video which is going to be explaining some of the things that we can do to overcome these problems. Based on the fact that what we've learned from this is that we don't always necessarily get our weekly tasks done. And what I've learned recently is that assigning yourself tasks for a given week or a given day is not the best thing to do for your productivity. In fact, it's almost one of the worst things you can do for your productivity. There's a much better way to handle all of your to-dos and all of your tasks. And this is only something I found out recently and I'm really looking forward to sharing it with you because it has definitely transformed how I've been working and it really opened up my mind to understand how detrimental it was being for my productivity. So if you want to see that video, be sure you're subscribed. You need to have your notification bell on and that way you'll never miss that video. But it is going to be based on the book Getting Things Done by David Allen, which I have fallen in love with in the last couple of weeks. 
So I can't wait to share that with you. And now for a quick update on my Notion templates, just to see how we're getting along and you can see what I'm working on. Again, if you want to be aware of when those productivity templates are available, be sure you're subscribed to my email list at www.phdandproductivity.com. Thank you so much to everyone who has been subscribing to the email list. And I can't wait to start sharing PhD and productivity tips through there. This is going to be the sort of landing page, which is all of the planning and sort of to do items. Again, the sort of to do's is what I'm working on heavily at the moment, figuring out the best system to implement getting things done in Notion. So hopefully my next video will have exactly how to do that on Notion and exactly what you need to get things done. We have a calendar here and then I have my weekly schedule which is a time blocked schedule. Obviously I need to fill in all the other days but the idea is that as you're working through the day you can come back here and then see what you need to go to. So once I click project work I will be popped over to my project that I'm working on at the moment and that's when I can sort of fill in anything that I need to fill in for there. So that helps me to move around and then I can go back to where I was. Same thing for skills work. I have this section on transferable skills. So this is going to help you develop all of these transferable skills You can see how all of that works in terms of the weekly schedules. This is like a time blocked schedule. There's also the morning routine and evening routine checklist so that whatever habits you're trying to do, you could also add in a section or if there's anything that you don't want to see here, what's good is that you can just sort of click out of them and just shut them down if you just want to see let's like your to-do list. What I like about this as well is that I can have this little button for a new week and that way every time I want to fill in a new week it will just develop a new one of these so that each week even though if I have a similar schedule week to week I can fill in some specific details if I want to so it usually takes a little while. So that's what I have going at the moment for there. I also have this sort of thesis section where we have all of the different research areas, my literature, my research diary. That's what's going on at the moment and I hopefully will have these ready pretty soon, but I have been enjoying putting them together. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all of my wonderful members. You really make it possible for me to continue making these videos. So I really, really appreciate you and I'll see you all in the next video. Mm -hmm.